again folks welcome back to my channel i'm so glad that you guys are here for another fun video i am katie and you are watching my 31 days of vlogtober and we are now on day number 29 so going off of yesterday's prompt which was made for tv magic we are going to be talking about movies that um were made directly for the small screen uh that had a huge impact on your life that were you know in the spooky horror persuasion so we will be getting to my choices here in just a couple minutes and I do have a couple for you. Um, but let's go ahead and go over my book choice first. So my book for today is another fun little guide. And this one is called American Hauntings. So this guy right here. And this one was written by Mary Beth Sammons and Robert Edwards. And it kind of details, like a lot of the, these books do, you know, different areas around the United States that, um, you know, have hauntings going on at them. So this one is kind of set up differently than others. A lot of the times they go based on state, but this one kind of goes over um, different haunted locations instead. So part one is kind of broken down. It's called This Old House. So it's hauntings that have to do with haunted buildings, you know, like an inn or a bed and breakfast or uh, hotels, mansions, things like that. The second part is um, behind the scenes of America's haunted public places. So like landmark buildings, schools, museums, libraries, hospitals, things like that. Part three is the uh, time-honored ghosts from battlefields. So they go over different locations, national parks, phantoms, um, making no notice of themselves at um, like haunted attractions. And then they have a certain little nod to like cemeteries and lighthouses, which of course is my favorite thing. They go over about I think there's eight lighthouses that they have uh, picked for this book. And then, of course, they go over, like, Gettysburg and other military bases. Uh, and then part four is Meet the Rich and Famous. So they kind of discuss famous ghosts, you know, um, Marilyn Monroe's ghost or, you know, whoever it is at either their, their grave site and things like that. So it's a great book. It's a really quick read. It's about uh, 200 and some pages. Let me see. 298 pages so there is a lot that they've jam-packed into this book but it's a really fun easy read like I said and uh, I think one that you guys would really enjoy so definitely pick up American Hauntings um, and the subtitle is over 100 true stories of haunted hotels theaters lighthouses and other spiritual spirited places so definitely check out this book my movie choices today, um, like I said, I've got quite a few. The first one I want to talk about um, was a cartoon um, little animated series that was made back in 1978, I think. Yep. Came out October 27th, 1978, and it had a pretty good cast. The two main female leads were Gilda Radner, who um, was of, you know, Saturday Night Live fame. She married Gene Wilder. Um, and then Catherine O'Hara. So and Catherine O'Hara is kind of renowned. She was Sally from A Nightmare Before Christmas. She is current. Well, she was currently, you know, most recently, I guess, in uh, the absolutely fantastic Canadian sitcom Schitt's Creek. And she's been in thousands of things. I mean, she's been in so many specials and TV movies. Beetlejuice. Um, she was in like a mighty wind and she was in best in show and all of these great, great films. So this was kind of a, a cute little, you know, 25 minute, um, animated special in regards to these two kids and they are trying to scare people on Halloween, but their costumes aren't coming across as that and they're not scaring anybody. So they call on this witch to come and turn them actually into these terrifying creatures so that they can actually scare their friends. And so the witch comes and she does. She grants their request, turns them into this, these creatures. I think one becomes a werewolf and one becomes a ghost. Um, and their babysitter gets turned into the Frankenstein creature. But then the witch loses her her magic wand and can't change the kids back. So then the kids start getting, you know, chased around town by the townspeople and everyone is very scared of them. And the kids realize, you know, maybe it's not the best idea to be scary. And uh, Catherine O'Hara's character plays a character named Malicious and she is just that. She's this rotten character and her <laughs> husband in it is called Rotten. So it's rotten and malicious. And uh, it's so weird. It is so 70s. And I'm sure if you see this movie, you understand what I mean by that. The colors are so... 
I want to say retro, but I mean, really, truly, they are standout 70s. And uh, the music in it, there's some like, you know, disco kind of music in it. And it's just so funny. And it's so, it's so endearing. It's so clever. I absolutely love this, this little short tale. So if uh, you want to find it, it is available on YouTube. I'll try and find the best version of it and I'll link it in my description box below so you can go check it out but like I said it's just like a 24 25 minute little short that ran I think on CBS for the first time I didn't write that down I think it was CBS and uh you know you gotta love these these movies made for kids that were just you know in the vein of the Charlie Brown Christmas and Charlie Brown, Brown the Great Pumpkin and um they were just made for the single you know intent of making kids happy and this little movie definitely did that for me and my sister we absolutely loved this this was on a tape that my parents made for us that included the pumpkin who couldn't smile the raggedy ann and andy movie that i noted before and the uh, buttons and rusty which which is which and uh, so we watched that tape kind of on a loop when we were kids and I've never forgotten them. I have always wanted to watch them every Halloween. So that's my first choice. My second choice um, is, is kind of different. Uh, this isn't really necessarily a Halloween movie, but it was brought to my attention actually just last year. This was a 1982 made for TV movie that starred Patrick Duffy and uh, Cindy Pickett and Martin Cove is also in this. Martin, um, you may know him from, uh, <laughs> he plays in The Karate Kid. He plays Sensei Kreese, um, that big jerk character. So he was also in this, this little made-for-TV movie. This one aired on CBS as well, and it was back in February of 1982. And it's called Cry for the Strangers. And this was based off of a book by John Saul. And uh, they they kind of star as these characters that move to the small seaside town and everybody treats them weird because they're strangers and you find out that other strangers that have come to the town disappear or are killed under weird circumstances. And the reason why I'm talking about this movie and the reason it even came on my radar is because they filmed this film in Oregon on the, uh, the the coast at Hasita Head Lighthouse. So the house that Patrick Duffy and Cindy Pickett are moving into is actually the bed and breakfast, uh, the assistant keeper's house uh, at, at Hasita Head. And I thought that was incredible. I'd never heard of that before until I read the small little blurb uh, on a website. So I had to look the movie up. The movie is ridiculous, but... <laughs> It's highly entertaining, so I will try and find that video again. I will also link that down below because, like I said, all of these things are pretty easily accessible on YouTube, thank goodness. So um, that that's my second choice. It's it, Like I said, it's not necessarily a Halloween film, but it is scary and spooky because they kind of have... Every night is a thunderstorm, so they incorporate a lot of those spooky, creepy vibes into this movie, so... I recommend that one next. My third one I want to talk about the most, um, I'm not talking about Mr. Boogity and Bride of Boogity today. I know some people were expecting it and it makes a lot of sense since it's a, they are both made for TV, um, but I am actually going to be discussing them tomorrow. So spoiler alert, if you came to hear about Mr. Boogity and Bride of Boogity, that's coming tomorrow. But today I want to talk about another film that debuted before I was born back in 1979. Um, this one debuted October 28th, 1979, and it is called The Halloween That Almost Wasn't. So this has also been uh, renamed The Night Dracula Saved the World when they put it on VHS tapes back in like the early 80s and, some, and such. But um, I think that's a really stupid name for them to have rebranded it because the whole premise of the story is that these monsters, you know, who are kind of overseen by Dracula and they feel, you know, disrespected and they feel like they're being treated poorly. So the witch decides she doesn't want to be the witch anymore. She's tired of being called ugly, tired of getting less respect than Dracula. So the idea that they would rebrand the movie as the night Dracula saved the world is ludicrous. So you'll never hear me call it that ever. The only reason why I've said it is to kind of note it for my video, but 
it will always be the Halloween that almost wasn't. So this movie, like I said, it's it's just a short little thing. So it's weird, weird to call things movies when they're only like 25, 30 minutes long. But when I was a kid, my sister and I watched this religiously. So they showed it back in 1978, but then Disney Channel got the rights because this was shown on ABC. So then they showed it basically every Halloween season from 1983 up through 1996. So if you are a kid from those decades, you've most definitely probably seen this movie. And whether it resonated with you the way it did with my sister and I, I'm not sure, but um, we did. Like Gangbusters, we watched it every single season. And we both have it memorized. And <laughs> there's only two other people in the world that I know of, my friends Mark and Danny, who are brothers. And they did the same thing. They watched it when they were kids and they love it so much. They've got it memorized too. So anytime I see Mark or Danny, we have to quote the Halloween that almost wasn't together. But the whole premise of the movie is that somebody has started this rumor that Halloween's going to end. And so Dracula invites all of his monsters to his castle. And so he's got, you know, Warren the werewolf and he's got Zabar the zombie and he's got the mummy and he's got, um, uh, did I get them all? No, 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 of course. Um, the Frankenstein creature and Igor is of course his, his little minion that he's always got around the castle. But, um, the characters, and I do want to note this because it's pretty incredible, some of these people. So Dracula is played by Judd Hirsch, who kind of got his big claim to fame through the television series Taxi back in the like late 70s, early 80s. And then he went on, he did a couple other TV shows he was in that show Numbers, Warehouse 13, uh, The Goldbergs, he's been on Big Bang Theory, and he was also on a series about four years ago called Forever that I thought was really entertaining, and it did not last forever, unfortunately. But I always thought it was great that he was on that show. And then Mariette um, Hartley, she plays the witch. And I don't think they ever really give her a name in this, which feels weird to me, because, like I said, she's, like, the main reasoning for this movie. But so she kind of got her start in Rhoda. She was on episodes of The Twilight Zone. She was also in Encino Man. So if you have seen that movie with Brendan Fraser and Polly Shore, you have definitely seen Marriott Hartley. And then the thing I thought was so funny when I was researching this, there is a character named Warren the Werewolf, and he is played by Jack Riley. And uh, Jack Riley is going to be known to anybody who watched Nickelodeon in the early, mid, late 90s. He played the voice of Stu Pickles from Rugrats. So Tommy Pickles, the little baby's dad in that series. And I watched that show so much with my little brother. My, my brother Edison was born in 1993. So we watched Rugrats religiously. And I had no idea that Warren the Werewolf played Stu Pickles. So I read that when I was doing my research and was like, oh my god, that's incredible. So, fun little fact. And then John Shuck, he plays the Frankenstein creature, and he had parts in Pippi Longstocking. If you're a kid of the, the 80s, you know Pippi Longstocking. He plays Ephraim, who is Pippi Longstocking's dad, and he was also in Demon Knight. So if you are a fan of the spooky movies and you've seen Demon Knight, which is a fabulous, fabulous, like, Tales from the Crypt series. Um, I loved Demon Knight. May talk about that later on down the road, but um, that one starred Billy Zane and Jada Pinkett was in it. Just really good film. But yeah, so he was in this movie as well. And then Joseph Ellick, who plays Zabar the Zombie, who's this cute old man. I just found out he did pass away last year in October. So I think he was like 98 years old, though. He lived a good long life. But he also starred in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. So if you've seen that film, you have seen Joseph before. And then the person that plays the mummy has no acting credits aside from the Halloween that almost wasn't. And you don't even see his face in this movie because he's covered with bandages. So I kind of feel bad for Robert Fitch. So I'll give him a shout out on this episode. Uh, it was great you stumbling around in your, your bandages. So Robert Fitch was the mummy. And then Igor was played by Henry Gibson. And I know you know who Henry Gibson is. Uh, if you have seen The Burbs, 
He plays Dr. Klopek. Um, he was in, well, he played Wilbur's voice in Charlotte's Web. He was in Biodome. He was in The Luck of the Irish, which was a Disney Channel original movie. Uh, he was in Wedding Crashers. And he was also a character on a TV show called Erie, Indiana. More on that later. So it was a huge collection of these fun characters that were pretty renowned, popular back in the 1970s. And uh, it's just such a great story. So Dracula compiles all these people to the castle and he tells them, you know, somebody has started this rumor. And uh, you come to find out it was the witch. She started it because she's done with Halloween. She's tired of all of the name calling and kids being afraid of her instead of loving her. So that's her her goal, is it? If she does not fly over the moon on her broom on Halloween night, then Halloween cannot go on, and it'll be canceled from that moment forward. So, you know, the kids, they show these these two kids watching the news, and the news is, is updating that, you know, this may be the end of us beloved 2,000-year-old tradition. And so the monsters are trying to get the witch to change her mind, and these kids decide that they're going to go find the witch and tell her how much you know she means to them so that they can keep Halloween as their one of their favorite holidays and so that's what changes the witch's mind not Dracula she has all these conditions that she wants Dracula to meet before she'll continue to be this wicked witch and uh, it's really in the end it's these kids that come and tell her how important that she is to them and uh, they change her mind but it is so funny it's so quotable if you see this movie you will laugh forever there are so many scenes in this movie that are just goofy and judd hirsch plays dracula so spectacularly and you know people always ask what your favorite version of dracula is and people say you know gary oldman or they say um you know, they say Nosferatu and, and they say um, Christopher Lee and all of these amazing actors. But I think Judd Hirsch is my favorite Dracula of all time. And I'm not even mentioning Dracula Dead and Loving It because, oh my gosh, Leslie, <laughs> Leslie Nielsen was incredible too. But oh, Judd Hirsch was the primo Dracula and he'll always be, in my opinion, my favorite Dracula. So I implore you to please watch this movie. It is so spectacular. It's so funny. And uh, I think you guys are going to get a huge kick out of it. So again, I will note in the description box my favorite version that I can find of the Halloween that almost wasn't so that you can see it. And uh, hopefully you'll pass it on to your kids and it will live on forever um, as such a, a classic, perfect movie. So that is my main pick for today is the Dracula, uh, the, the Dracula, <laughs> the Halloween that almost wasn't. And I, I honestly could talk about this movie for ever. I mean, they, it did get a lot of uh, notor notoriety as well. It was uh, nominated for four Emmy Awards. It won one. Um, it won for Outstanding Achievement in Children's Programming. So I don't know what the other three nominations it was for, but it did win. And I think that's pretty amazing. And uh, it was also, I want to note this because I've been here before. So it was shot at Lindhurst Castle that is located in Terrytown, New York. And uh, if you're familiar with Terrytown, it is the Basically, it was Sleepy Hollow before they changed the small little village of Sleepy Hollow to its name back in 1996. So Terrytown is kind of renowned for Washington Irving in general. His um, homestead of Sunnyside lives there. And uh, so I have visited Lyndhurst. I went there with my cousin Aaron about two years ago. We got to walk around the grounds. There was a wedding going on. So we got to see, you know, the entire place dolled up for a wedding. It was the middle of October. It was perfect. I'll see if I can find some pictures and I'll post them up here so you can see. Um, but it was an incredible um, thing to be there and to be at this location where the Halloween that almost wasn't was shot. So, you know, my goofy Halloween love at heart was just in my element. But my cousin Aaron, I don't think he's ever seen the Halloween that almost wasn't. So it wasn't so exciting. You know, I didn't really have anybody to share that with. But... <laughs> 
I think they've also shot the newer versions of Dark Shadows. Um, I think that one of the, the newer series was also shot at Lyndhurst. So if you've not looked up Lyndhurst, you should check that out. It's a beautiful place, beautiful grounds. Um, that whole part of New York is gorgeous. It's uh, located about 20 minutes from New York City. So, you know, if you're taking a trip to the big city, you should probably add a little detour and go visit Terrytown and Sleepy Hollow. So that's all I'll say about it. But I love the Halloween that almost wasn't. Um, I've been kind of throwing around the idea of doing maybe a YouTube live and um, maybe watching some of these movies together. I don't know how you guys feel about that, but I was kind of thinking, I talked to my sister about this, about maybe doing a YouTube live on my birthday, which is coming up. It's November 8th. And I thought maybe we could do a live watch of, you know, Mr. Boogity or, and or Ride of Boogity. And uh, since it's on Disney Plus, anybody could really watch those at, at this point. You know, I just let you guys know when to start your movie and we can chat, you know, while we watch it. And uh, I don't know, like I said, I don't know if you guys would be interested in that, but uh, it, I will definitely be, be watching it. So if you guys want to um, watch it with me, that would be wonderful. So more on Mr. Boogity and more on that tomorrow. But that those are my movie picks for today. So I had um, Witch's Night Out and Cry for the Strangers and the Halloween that almost wasn't. So again, links for those will all be noted down below. Um, give it a, a day or two for me to get those uploaded because the way it works with YouTube, they let you upload the video and then um, you can update all the details and stuff on it once the video has been uploaded. So sometimes I'm a little backdated on getting all of my details updated. So just give me a little time and I will make sure I get that uploaded for you. But um, let's go ahead and move on to my TV series. So I mentioned earlier Erie, Indiana when we were talking about Henry Gibson. So uh, spoiler alert, that's the uh, show we're going to be talking about today. And I'm sure you've probably heard of this if not seen it, but it stars Omri Katz, who I'm sure you know who Omri is. He was the lead Max in Hocus Pocus. He also starred in a movie called Adventures in Dinosaur City um, that a lot of people I don't think saw, it, but I think I remember watching it on Disney Channel when I was a kid, and it's kind of a Honey, We Shrunk the Kids kind of a story where... Um, the main character's parents are kind of like, you know, nuclear biologists or, you know, like cell cellular biologists and they're uh, trying to work with these different machines to, uh, you know, I think they're like trying to do a time machine or something in it. And uh, they inadvertently actually created this machine that will transport people into other things. So in this show... Omri's um, character gets transported into one of his favorite games, which is called Adventures in Dinosaur City. So he gets zapped in and has this crazy adventure. But like I said, I don't think a lot of people have seen that show. Um, but I will find details. If I can find it on YouTube, I'll post it down below. But it is fabulous. But so Erie, Indiana was Omri's first well, and only kind of foray into TV series stardom. But he plays Marshall Teller and Marshall's best friend Simon he meets when he moves to Erie, Indiana. And of course, it's just E-R-I-E, -E, Indiana. But this show takes it and puts a spit on it that, you know, Erie, Indiana is the strangest place in America. And all these weird things keep happening in this town. And so the whole series goes through these crazy happenings that Marshall documents and Simon is of course there to help him along the way. And uh, I think that there's like 25 or 26 episodes total, but they're all on these little teeny tiny discs, you know, the way they used to do this back in the day. But my favorite episodes, I always thought, well, my most favorite episode, let me find it. It's I think it's the scariest home videos episode, which um, is set on Halloween, of course, and uh, they get sucked into a monster movie that they're watching on TV. And so it was reminiscent to, there's also an Are You Afraid of the Dark episode that kind of touched on that with a Nosferatu-esque vampire that they're watching it on a big screen and he comes out of the movie. And so it was kind of along the same veins, but it was a, you know, a mummy ghost story. And so the mummy kind of 
trades places with the Marshall's little brother and so he gets zapped into the movie and then the mummy guy gets zapped out of the movie and into real life and uh, it's just so clever so funny there was an episode called foreverware which will stay with me forever I think it was the first episode in the whole series yeah first episode in the whole series called foreverware and basically it's about this group of people in the town that um are able to preserve themselves and stay young because they sleep in these they're pods but they're they look like big things of tupperware and so they're able to you know preserve themselves in the foreverware i just thought it was so weird and so wonderful and uh that was the beauty of eerie indiana the storylines were goofy and kind of scary but not so scary you know that kids couldn't watch it and totally enjoy it so that is my tv recommendation for today it is eerie indiana i love it to pieces and uh I, like i said i bought it on dvd ages ago i think uh, i don't know probably 10 years or so ago but uh this is quite the show to watch and I definitely recommend if you've got kids you should find a way for them to see Erie Indiana because they will absolutely love it you know Erie Indiana is the center of strangeness so if you like your kids being a little spooky and strange they should watch in Erie Indiana too so that's my tv show choice for today so let's move on to our prompt for tomorrow and prompt for tomorrow is movies you love to love so like i said i've already told you i'm going to be speaking about my favorite movies of all time tomorrow mr boogity and bride of boogity i may throw another one in there um but i'm also i'm just giving it away that i'm going to be talking about them tomorrow because i am literally so excited to talk about these movies and i still think um i may not go into excessive detail about the movies there. Um, like I said, if you guys are interested in doing a watch with me situation where we um, watch Mr. Boogity together, you know, via uh, Disney Plus, or if you you can rent it through Amazon Prime if you don't have Disney Plus, um, or something like, along those lines. But I just thought it'd be like a fun little thing to do, um, a little birthday present to myself, I guess, to be able to chat with all of you at the same time. So. That's kind of my my thought process for now. It, things might change, but if you guys are interested, let me know. And uh, tomorrow we're going to chat about movies we love to love. So I will see you tomorrow. You guys take care of yourselves. Stay healthy. Be courteous to each other. Wear your masks. Um, be kind human beings. And I will see your lovely faces tomorrow.